So how do I describe the sand hills of Nebraska? It's something you have to see to believe. First glance out here, you'd think there's nothing. It's just a sea of open grassland. But boy, I'll tell you what, all those little basins and stuff out there that uh, hold moisture, have slough bottoms and little thickets of shrubs and stuff, and the deer, they thrive out here. Central Nebraska here, where we outfit, you can probably expect uh, anywhere on the whitetail side, probably 140, 150 inch whitetails, kind of on average. This is just massive, expansive prairie land. It's breathtaking. So how do you describe the sand hills of Nebraska? You know, for the average person you go out there, you'd say, this is pretty boring, there's not much here. But this is native prairie grass. It's just, it's massive, it's unbelievable. This section of the state, and we think about the sand hills, a lot of people think about a very small region, it's not. It covers a quarter of Nebraska. 20,000 square miles of Nebraska is covered by the sand hills. Mostly prairie land, but let me tell you, it is something that you have to see to believe. Yeah, out here in the sand hills, uh, most people think there's nothing out here for the deer, but there's a ton of grass. I mean, in these sub-irrigated meadows, there's a lot of clover and, I mean, a lot of grass, lush green grass in the bottoms there. So, I mean, there's plenty of food out here for them. I mean, for our, our whitetails, uh, we look for, you know, the, the creek bottoms, river bottoms. Uh, it's kind of where they tend to hang out. But I'm, but there is some big whitetails that kind of go up in the hills. You can probably expect uh, anywhere on the whitetail side, probably 140, 150 inch whitetails, kind of on average. Sandhill buck down. We're hunting with Goose Creek Outfitters. I've been here several years in a row and uh, really enjoy this open country hunting. And uh, it's a great opportunity to get out and really practice your spot and stock skills. Go out and try to find deer as you slowly work your way through the hills. Come around the edges, glass the basins, glass the shrubs, uh, watch the horizon. It, uh, it's a very fulfilling way to hunt when you actually put everything together and make it happen from your own hunting skills. You know, last night we sat on a really nice, typical framed mule buck, a nice big four by four. He'd be a trophy in almost anyone's standards. Uh, I was dreaming about him last night and thought for sure we'd come back and find him this morning, but here we ended up with a whitetail, and that's the nice part about Nebraska, is you get a deer license here and it's good in the sand hills for either a whitetail or a mule deer. So uh, very unique hunting opportunities. When you see these deer out there, sometimes it's hard to distinguish what they are, but if you look at the leading edges of all the hair on a whitetail, they're actually white, they're light. And if we had a mule deer in hand here, I could show you that they're actually gray and black right through the chest and belly. And they show up much darker as a silhouette on the hills and stuff. So if you're hunting in country where you have both whitetails and mule deer, of course, you've got uh, some antler configuration. You've got that big white flag and the white rump on the mule deer, but uh, their silhouette is really important. And look for the lighter ones are typically the white tails and the ones that show up black almost are sure to be mule deer. Hi, I'm Brad Fenson. We're here with 10 Point hunting deer in Nebraska. We're allowed a mule deer or a white tail sitting in a box blind tonight, great food plot in front of us, and if a deer comes out, I already know that I don't want to just freehand this bow. I want to get any rest that I possibly can. Of course, the stirrup sitting on the windowsill makes this thing a sound chamber and makes lots of noise. So I've always used a steady eddy on my 10 point. It's a great monopod rest, but what I do with it, I don't put it on the ground. If you're wearing rubber boots, it fits into the top really well, but today I'm wearing leather boots 
and the ball of the Steady Eddy will fit right into the inside of your boot. What it does is it becomes an adjustable brace for your, your bow. So if I have to shoot low, I just move my foot out or down and I can shoot. If we're shooting in a blind where we had an uphill angle, I lift my foot and all of a sudden I'm already adjusted to shoot uphill. So I can move left, right, up, down, all by moving my foot silently off the ground. It's a great way to have a super solid rest. I can hold dead steady on my target. And all I have to do is be wearing a pair of boots. He's pouring blood. Is he? Oh yeah. That's a hard shot. He just fell down. I think so. Got it. Got this. White tails in Nebraska. <laughs> So what you see is what you get. You know, driving around, you wouldn't think much of it. This is massive prairie land, and that's what it's good for. It's good for raising cattle, and they've been doing it for hundreds of years. And if you think about wildlife, you'd say, well, there's not much here. There's not many woodlots or draws or even waterways, creeks, ponds, not too much of that. Plenty of wildlife. Don't let that fool you. There's mule deer, there's whitetails, tons of upland game, and also wild turkeys. I might be the luckiest hunter in America because it usually happens for me first or second day, probably because I'm not so picky, but first morning in our stand, we're in an elevated blind, immediately, right at first light, we have deer everywhere. We have does, and now this, where we were, was mostly whitetails, actually all whitetails were hunting this first morning, and we see some does right away, we see some bucks right away, and before this morning even starts, hot doe about 200 yards to our west, and she is holed up in a fence row with a really nice eight pointer. Well, it did not take long for that advertisement to bring other customers to the party, and we had a full blown breeding party on our hands. This is why I love Nebraska gun season. We've got a hot doe right here. The rod is just peaking. That's the first 10 pointer I think I've ever passed up. He was pretty, don't get me wrong, if I'm at home, we have a dead deer, but it's the first morning. I might regret it, but he's pretty, but he came right in. We had a really blackish colored He's still there, eight pointer. I knew he had a hot doe. That 10 came, he made some scrapes. He, he sent checked this whole field edge. He locked horns, locked antlers, won the fight, and now he's with the doe and she's not moving, she's in there. But we've got three other smaller bucks. I think this is gonna be a good morning. Why? Well, bucks started showing up out of nowhere and we had a full-blown breeding party on our hands. 
So I don't use that term loosely, breeding party. That's something that Charlie Alshimer taught us decades ago in that when you have one doe and if she's the first one or one of the first ones in an area that goes into estrus, what's gonna happen is all these bucks, those hormones are raging and they want to procreate, they wanna keep that species going. So basically that doe is gonna bring in bucks of all ages, all sizes, and that's what we had. We had yearling bucks, we had two-year-olds, but I also thought, hey, first morning, all these bucks are showing up, maybe something even bigger is gonna show up. Got him. We just killed her buck, buddy. Well, we just did it. Uh, this was, I mean, look at this. We've got bucks everywhere. This is insane. I am shaking so hard. First morning, Nebraska. The one thing I always say, I like hunting about hunting in Nebraska. Scott Fink, Goose Creek Outfitters. It's unbelievable. I mean, you come here for gun season. Just give me a second. Oh my gosh. I can't hold it in. I am shaking so hard, man. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's our buck. He's dead right there. This was one of the most incredible mornings. This is one of the most incredible mornings I've ever had gun hunting. For me, I said it once, I said it a thousand times, big or small, I love them all. And when I'm walking up to a deer and his antlers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and that body's getting bigger and bigger and rounder, wow, what a morning. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by You know, the one thing I love about Sever is that they come with many options. So you can have the same weight ahead with different cutting diameters or use the same head for practice before you go out. Let's talk about the different applications and options that are out there. Yeah, let's look at the 1.5. The 1.5 is a 1.5 inch cutting diameter. That's really for the guys that want to pull out the stops with penetration. Right, so people chasing elk, moose, bigger game, heavier bones, that 1.5 is just so superior in terms of penetration that uh, you really can't overlook it. Most common, I think, because most people hunt deer, 2.0. 2.0, that's really my go-to for most <laughs> for most applications. Gives you a great big cut. You know, you get that stretch cut going in. So even if you didn't get full penetration, you still get a big blood trail. But that swept back design is gonna add more penetration and it's got that locking pivoting like all the sever heads do. So as it encounters a bone, that blade will pivot out of the way, but still continue to cut. So that's gonna aid in making that head go straight through where you want it to without being deflected. You know, and I, a lot of people don't realize this, but the blades are actually tucked inside the ferrule. They don't catch any wind. And aerodynamically, the wind and acceleration actually pushes them in so that they're not going to deploy when they're coming off a rail, even on high speed crossbows or the best uh, vertical bows out there, they are going to stay contained until they're deployed on the That's animal. That's right, because the inertia with this forward pivot point that you've got here, the inertia of the shot is actually keeping those blades in. It works with that inertia instead of against it. So you're not going to have any problems with pre-deployment. Right, and it, again, the rear deployment is awesome because you don't lose any energy within that. When it opens, right, right. Then the last one in the line is the Robusto. It's also a 2.0. It's 150 grains because it's made out of stainless steel. So it's our strongest head. And that one is for somebody that really, it works for vertical bow or crossbow. We pitch it mostly for the crossbow because you really need that extra FOC for accuracy, but it's also 
as the name says, the most robust head in the line made at stainless steel and at 150 grains. And it's really important to talk about that because most archers think that speed kills, but it is actually the kinetic energy and the penetration that's going to do the ultimate damage when you go after an animal and that Robusto is like Well, you've used gold. it, I've used it, and it's deadly. <laughs> Yes, the Robusto takes things to a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, and, and really we should point out, there's a severed broadhead for everybody. Really Penetration, is. all around, crossbow, whatever kind of hunting you do, we've got them. You know, you even have a field point now. Yeah, that's right. This is brand new. In fact, we're just releasing it right now. You know, there's a lot of shooting that we do in the backyard or at 3D. This is, we, this is a new head that we have or a new, a new field point that we have. And we thought, you know, let's pay some attention to detail on this and make a field point that really is, has been looked at and is a premium product. So it's a bulge design. So when you shoot that into foam, it's gonna be easier to pull your arrow. It's machined steel, it's nickel plated, hardened steel. So it's gonna be really durable. And really it's, it's not a lot of money. So it's a great value as well. And you can have a premium field point to practice with. And they come in different weights? Yeah, we have different diameters to match up to all different arrow diameters and different weights. 100, 125, and then in the big one, we have a 150 to kind of match up with that Robusto. Well, there you have it. There really is a sever for everything, including practicing. And to go through the options and look at them, please go to severbroadheads.com. You know, I love hunting swamps, and this goes back over, over 30 years, when I used to really hunt public land hard. One thing that I learned back then that has really helped me now is that I have to look at scouting as an incremental process. And what I mean by that is, today when I'm scouting, a swamp like this, it's almost impossible to hunt. Yes, there are maybe a tr tree here or there where I could get a stand, but it's not conducive. Blinds, very difficult, especially when you're hunting mature bucks. So what I like to use in these areas is I like to pinpoint the exit and entry routes of bucks at various times of the year. And that's where a wireless camera really comes in handy. I'm not gonna hunt this area because I, I know if I come in here, I'm gonna blow it out. I'm gonna educate the deer very quickly. But what I want to learn is when the deer are coming through here, there's some really main trails coming back and I know there's bedding areas to the south of here. There's feeding areas to the north of here. What I want to learn is when these deer are coming through this area, and I'm gonna, which allows me this cutting link camera, I have another camera about 200 yards from here, another camera 200 yards from there. This daisy links those photos back to my home camera. I can scout this six months or a year without even coming to check this camera and allows me to hone in, zero in on those really productive spots. Because let's face it, when you're hunting mature bucks, you have to have A, a productive spot where you're gonna see that deer during daylight, and B, it's gotta be close quarters when you're bow hunting. You're gonna have to be in an area where I can set up a stand and hunt him and get a shot at him. What I'm learning from here is when he's unpressured, okay, I know where he's coming through and I'm where he's coming back. I can take that bird's eye view really hone those other areas down and hunt the perimeters of the security cover and really increase my chances.